Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, here we are again in the NRC Freedom of Information Act documents, and I've managed to find something I read over before that I knew was important, and I didn't screen capture it at the time, but I, I searched back through and poured back through these documents, and I was able to find it. And this is in regards to Stephen Chu, and there's this back and forth in regards to testing the Pacific, testing the waters offshore of Fukushima, and this is in late April. So it's you know not quite two months after the catastrophic meltdowns, and there's some interest in a timely manner going out and taking measurements and samples while you can, because as we know, the half life for the iodine and cesium you know can be short in comparison to you know, like plutonium. So in the interest of timeliness, you want to get out there and take these measurements and samples as soon as you can to best reflect and have your science uh, accurately. You know, represent the amount of radiation that's being released or have some better idea in any case. So this first uh, email is from April 27th and it's sent to Stephen Chu, who's now the former uh, DOE chairman, Department of Energy, and it's from the uh, TGN PhD Robert T. We'll just call him Robert T. I can't pronounce that. I don't want to do him injustice there. And he says, Hi Steve, I'm giving your contact to Vicki Chandler, the science program officer at the Moore Foundation, because she, Gordon, and Steve McCormack are thinking about sending a team to collect real-time data at the nuclear spill site as a first critical step to monitor the long-term consequences to ocean ecosystems, etc. Hope you have a few minutes to talk with Vicki so she can better evaluate what is best course of action should the GBMF decide to quickly move forward with this urgent project. Okay, and that's sent to Stephen Chu, and this person um, obviously is high level enough to you know, be on a basis with Stephen Chu. He can send him an email and expect a response. Okay, and so here's uh, back from Stephen Chu. Uh, that's from Vicki Chandler, Subject Japan, to Stephen Chu. He says, I'm following up on Tija's email. And this is this lady now following up on the other guy's email approaching Stephen Chu. She says, our foundation has been approached by Ken Buseler of WHOI regarding a time-sensitive need to obtain early estimates of the radiochemistry and radioecology within a 200-kilometer area in the oceans near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. My conversations with OSTP NSF and NOAA substantiated the need, but no ability in the agencies to support a timely research cruise to collect those data. Obviously, there are political sensitivities too. Is there someone in your agency I could talk to, as it would be very helpful to have another expert opinion about the need for this and their thoughts on challenges? Okay, we're going to come back to this in a second. I'll expound upon it and tell you, you know, help you out on what that means there. And this final email here is from a Stephen Chu to Vicky Chandler and a couple other people. He says, Vicky, the Japanese have been taking ocean samples off the coast. Our nuclear group can give you access to the data we have. You should ask relevant Japanese officials for their data, which may be more extensive. I have copied John Holdren, head of OSTP, and Admiral Donald, who is a four-star in nuclear navy, parentheses, and part of the DOE, in close parentheses, as well. I will look around in other parts of the DOE as well. NOAA has most of the government research surface ships, so I am not hopeful. Finally, there is a matter of who will pay for this. Who will pay for this? And I'm going to come back to that, but let me back up to the one we just read prior to this one. And, and note what's important here. It's a time-sensitive. You need to get out there in, in a hasty manner as quickly as you can without injuring yourself and get these samples in so we can understand what has really happened there. Now, are they in a hurry to do that? No. They don't want any real indication to come out and get to anyone other than this tightly knit, tightly close group of agencies and corporations and this consortium that's, you know, taking hold of this information and hanging on to it. They're not, they're not being free of this information whatsoever. Within a 200-kilometer area, so they want to go a ways out. They know it's in the water. They know they need to test. And it says that here that the NOAA and a couple of these other agencies substantiated the need. They said, oh, yeah, it needs to be done. 
but no ability in the agencies to support a timely research cruise to collect those data. So they say, yeah, we need to do it, but yeah, we can't help you. We don't have the ships and we don't have the means and we're unable to do it. And then this person says, obviously, there are political sensitivities, too. Okay, and some of you will remember my discussion from the documents about the thyroid doses to children in California. And then Ms. Howe, Linda Howe, said, hey, this is politically sensitive. Let's take it offline. So in these NRC FOIA documents, there's a references to this being politically sensitive. I remind you, April 28, 2011, Obama's run up to trying to get elected for a second term. And this all this was suppressed in all sectors of media. Everybody was in on suppressing this information. So look here and see that you know clearly agencies say, yes, we have a need to do testing, but now we can't really do anything about it. All right? Okay. And let me look at the last one here again. Let's go back to this one where Stephen Chu is responding. He says, well, they've already been taking samples off the coast. And if you guys watch my a Pacific Rim video I show from the documents where they're admit, admittedly purposefully discharging radioactive water into the ocean May or I should say March, April and likely into May I have evidence for that so he's saying hey they're already testing for it now they have access to the data they have data okay he says we have that and he says you should ask relevant Japanese officials for their data which may be more extensive well that's probably just going to lead you to a lot of disinformation right there and these guys aren't stupid they don't really want to give you the data they have. They want you to have to go looking for it. And at the bottom, he says, NOAA has most of the government research surface ships. So I'm not hopeful. Right? He knows they don't want to cooperate. He knows they don't want to do this. Finally, there is the matter of who will pay for this. Okay, this callous disregard, this flippant attitude when we just got hosed for, what, 8.9 or 9.8 billion? Uh, it doesn't matter what's a billion here or there. On the Bechtel pumps for Japan. Okay, in these documents, we see where billions of dollars are being funneled to Bechtel for this pump system. Meanwhile, they're questioning. We, we know NOAA has the research surface ships. Hey, the Navy's probably got them, but there's no political will to do it. Nobody in these agencies, nobody in the Obama administration has the will to send them out there. And then here's Stephen Chu saying, well, who's going to pay for it? Okay, it's no, again... There's no real concern for our safety or to test and make sure we're safe. They're worried about money, political ramifications, political sensitivities, and that kind of thing. And this is our problem with nuclear and why there's a group of us now trying hard to just have it shut down, all plants decommissioned, suppressed uh, inventions and technologies and patents to be released, and these energy monopolies to relax their grip and give us back you know, our ability to produce energy in a safe, clean manner for ourselves. We don't like the monopoly and we don't like the kind of deception and shenanigans that go along with it. Here's further evidence right here. In fact, I want to make sure Kevin Blanche gets to see this one as well so he can, you know, he's into the Pacific Ocean. Well, here's indication early on, March, April 28th, they know darn well they need to be testing the water. And again, they've seen all the documents I've seen but from the Freedom of Information. I mean, they're part of the NRC. They're all connected. They're all working together. This is the conspiracy I talked about, and they're keenly aware, the Department of Energy, that TEPCO has been discharging water intentionally into the Pacific. So they know it's being discharged. They know the need has been substantiated to test for it, but they have no intention of doing it. We don't have the money. we got the ships. I just don't see it happening. That kind of thing, right? Okay, pretty much that ends this video, and thank you for joining me. It's Patrick Penry, over and out. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.